Oh yeah, that's how we do it, baby. <laughs> oh, can you feel the pain incoming? Our opponent draws a card. They lose to life. <laughs> the evil Demir laugh, not playing Demir. Hello everyone, it's Love, and today we are going for Mono Black. But before you click away, because I know the intros are boring. Man, the games, oh boy, the games were epic. Just watch the games. If you don't like intros, that's fine. But man, like we had so many comebacks, like we had mana screws. We have perfect plays around our opponents. So first of all, you can learn a lot from those games, even I did. And you know, other than this, they are just insane. They were so fun. I had such a blast playing this deck. Short Red is just a really fun card. Uh, like the meta will settle in a few days, so we will see how it goes. But man, I had so much fun with this card and it's just so amazing to see our opponent drawing cards into dying. <laughs> so if you don't watch intros, at least watch the games and like, I'll, I think all of them were really cool. So consider watching few of them before you click away, because I'm really proud of how we played and it was such a blast. Like just see how the cool cards are. So you can also like see, see what the decks you might like, because this one is really cool. So with that being out of the, the, of the way, of course, subscribe, bro subscribe and with that being said uh mono black this is control uh, like we are not going for super aggression yes we have trespasser yes we have like one drops but we are basically like a slower deck that wants to grind our opponent out of life and what is better than sheer dread the apocalypse a new card that was really hyped about i was pretty cautious about this card i still am but it definitely completely dictates the gameplay. <laughs> uh, I need to play it with it a bit more, but man, like so far, it seems that whoever got the Shardred, the Apocalypse, and the other one did not get it, uh, the guy with this card wins. That's my impression so far. <laughs> and I know because I was playing Mono Blacks and whoever drew it and whoever didn't have removal for it uh, basically won or lost the game. Like that was the case. Uh, so very interesting card and gaining life every single turn. Uh, it also offsets Sorin drawback so much. So it lets you even draw more cards than usually. Is a really big deal. So of course, if you don't know, for mana for five death touch and whenever you draw a card, you gain life and the opponent draws cards, they lose life. There are many decks that want to draw a lot of cards, even with cantrips like, you know, how is it called? Like, let's say impulse or things like this. Like I know, oh, consider. I, I meant consider. So like very cheap cards that just cycle your stuff because there's this uh, twist of instant and sorcery in the graveyard and a lot of decks will play it. And they usually want to play a lot of cheap spells that cycle themselves. This card punishes them so hard that they can lose like eight life a turn with this card just alone. And the fact that you gain life, it means that as long as ordered is on the board, usually you don't really die especially that ha this has really good stat line like four five especially if it was five four it would be way worse but four five especially with the death touch man like it's hard to kill and you don't want to block with it most of the time if you see that you cannot afford to lose it because then like they need to deal directly five damage it means they need high power to burn spells usually they have burn spells that deal three damage and one is not enough and you know this usually goes at least two for one and usually you get some benefit i like the card like we need to play with it more but definitely not card you can ignore at all you you need this always dictates the gameplay so uh, other cards liliana of the Veil, uh, a big hype thing for the set uh, Planewalker for 3 mana, of course, plus 1, each player discards a card, symmetrical effect, minus 2, target player sacrifices a creature, so it's basically 3 mana removal on top of a Planewalker. And minus 6 means that all permanents go into 2 piles, and your opponent chooses which one he takes, and the other one is sacrifice. So, you know, in the optimal world, you he loses half of his stuff. 
On the drawback, he can choose which stuff he wants. So if you, for example, you can split the lands and the critters, and he might be left with zero lands, but sealed enough board to kill you. So there are some tricks that it's not perfect, but for three mana Planewalker, that's an insanely strong ultimate because it actually is a complete game changer and it's on top of three mana Planewalker that wants to plus every turn very easily and it can defend itself. So really strong card overall, uh, very, definitely one of the big cards for the set. We also have Evolve Sweeper. Oh boy, like I was hyped, okay, maybe not hyped for this card, but I was, I really like the card. Before you craft it, maybe check out more videos. <laughs> uh, okay, let's be honest about this card. My impression so far, uh, it always dies and it never draws cards. What more? There's a small twist that you might not see. I actually didn't realize it before I played the card. You play it on turn one, right? So what happens on the next turn? You have two mana. But the ability says you either pay one mana for a 2-2 or together you need three mana to go into 3-3. But you have two. You have the worst of both cases. You are always one mana behind of what you want to do. And every of those steps comes one, one turn later. So in reality, uh, you need to play something else for one turn and then start using those abilities and then they make sense. That's a big deal because you are usually wasting one mana every single turn because you have no other play. Um, Sleeper, to be fair, I think he could be replaced for something better. I like it definitely does something. It creates some pressure, it, it's the removal, so maybe Shouldred won't be removed later. So. I'm not like full positive, maybe the reason it dies is just because it's the first creature on the battlefield, so our opponent always has some removal and it goes here. Maybe if that wasn't, like if we played zero of this one, maybe Shouldred would start dying every single turn we play it. So you know, I'm, I'm cautious, but so far I was not super happy about this. I think in all of the games in Dominaria United, I drew like once or twice with this card. And yeah, it, it's a lot of mana to draw one card. So maybe like Tenacious Underdog probably would be a stronger play because it's just m way more consistent on the mana and it also can draw you cards. So something to think about before you craft. I want to be honest because I know there's a hype on everything. So just be careful what you what you craft. I need to craft all of the cards just to showcase you guys the, the decks. But for myself, okay, I, this one I would craft anyway, because I, I love Dimir, so I would basically craft all the cards for Dimir, all the rares. But other than this, I'm not sure about this card. It feels a bit of a trap, to be honest. Uh, Cruelty of Geeks. Uh, this is five mana, read ahead, saga, of course, target opponent traverse the, their hand, you choose a creature or planewalker and discard it. Uh, second chapter is Grim Tutor, so you take the card from your deck and put it into your hand, so it's card advantage in a way, and you lose three life. This is not optional, you will lose three life. So for example, if you want to discard a card, it means that you will take three damage sooner or later. And okay, next turn, <laughs> you will get it next turn. <laughs> Something to think about if you are getting aggroed like crazy, because this is basically a lightning bolt in your face. The only reason to not get lightning bolt in your face is to skip the chapter one and two and go to chapter three. Uh, just something to remember, because sometimes you don't think about it like it's not optional. You need to pay yourselves for three life. And of course, the third chapter is put target creature card from a graveyard, any graveyard, onto the battlefield under your control. It's insanely powerful effect and the biggest reason the card is played. So it's basically a five mana reanimation spell, which is it's, it's a very decent spell. And uh, all other effects are basically sherry on the cake. So if you have time, you just get way more value. And honestly, chapter two is a big deal. This is, okay, maybe I was not completely right by saying that chapter three is the main power because I have won so many games just by getting this one perfect card for the situation that probably chapter two is also like win condition in a way. If you get either Invoke Despair or Midhook Massacre, depending on the matchup, 
This will probably swing the game in your favor so much that you will win. And especially if you follow it up with free creature from a graveyard while you invoke this parent tree, tree, tree for one. Uh, yeah, I okay, so chapter two and three are definitely super strong. Okay, uh, what the rest deck does? You know the cards. Uh, we have some removal. Cut down is, of course, the current staple for everything. So this is one of the reasons I've all sweeper dice always. And this is also the reason why Trespasser just got a little bit better. Because it has six as a, as a total stats and this targets five or less. This is direct counter to cut down, basically. And every other removal is bad. But the real reason, the real reason while the Trespasser is in the deck. It was added at some point. Believe me, it was added after some games. Yeah, I got so much, so much new cards. Hmm. Do you know this card? Yeah, this card is so played right now, especially in all the black decks. Nearly every deck runs it. Uh, you need something to exile from the graveyard and there's also some kind of Golgari decks that are you know mill based and they get stronger with Luyo Griffs, whatever it's Luyo Goyfs, I don't know, the, the weird creature from Historic. Uh, the, everything is based on the graveyard, you need some effect that will exile them or, or you are for a bad time, you definitely need something and I think Dresspasser is just basically the best one because on its own it's extremely good, it's hard to remove and you always get card advantage out of this nearly. And on top of this you can go for a game plan that switches to night time and just exiles two cards a turn if you, that's really the matchup that is important. And, you know, it's a strong 3-drop anyway, so whatever happens, you are happy with this card. We can even play more. We could, like, go to two underdogs and three trespassers. I also see this an option. All right, enough about the tenacious underdog. Uh, we have Sorin. We need card advantage for this deck, and Sorin, honestly, is such a powerful card. I had three of them, but I reduced to two. Uh, I think for the sake of lands, because I get mana screwed with this deck so much that paying on 25 lands basically equaled to 50% games loss just on the mana screw. And I just said, okay, I prefer to just get rid of one more card just to get rid of mana screws, and they are still here. Okay, so definitely Sorin needed, together with the Invoke Despair, they are the reason you don't lack cards late game. And also, this is direct damage, we deal a lot of direct damage with Shouldred, and we that's how we kill the opponent usually, we just deal direct damage. Like, you have Trespasser, you have Midhook, you have Shouldred, and you have Invoke Despair. You have all, also Sorin Ultimate. All of those things mean that if our opponent is at 5 HP, we don't have huge troubles by just finishing him off. And usually you won't have other chance, but unless you are dealing direct damage because the board is too huge. So unless you hit, you hit Midhook Massacre, you cannot go through the blockers. And you need direct damage or you lose the game. So that's the game plan. The deck is sweet. Uh, I especially like Shouldered. And Cruelty of Geeks is an amazing card, not gonna lie. Those are two of my favorites probably, and Liliana definitely puts a lot of pressure. I like personally Liliana because I whiff a lot on the draws, like it's normal for me to draw like four lands in a row. So Liliana actually translates those cards into very good cards because we can remove something great for our opponent hand who doesn't whiff and we can get rid of cards that we never needed in the first place. But yeah, this is one of the functions with Liliana. Pretty decent card. Okay, that's it. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe. And let's go into the fun games, because I really appreciate that you waited so long to hear my intro. Thank you. You are the, the cool guy. And I really appreciate it. You are a real bro. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was worth your time. And video will definitely be the games were awesome so let's go into the fun zone okay so i'm not sure about this hand especially on the draw it's so it's so slow it's insane so let's keep it right lotus i just want you to you know come into the board and ramp us into invoke the spare on turn two that would really help in winning all the games Let, let's get cut down 
Man, it's so weird. Like, you are always behind on tempo. Like, this is something that's so not obvious when you see the card. It just feels like one, two, three. Oh, it's perfectly on curve. Oh, no, bro. It's not. It's so not on curve that you will cry every single time you miss this one mana. And now we can go up to two and waste one mana. Then we can go up to two, uh, three, three, and waste one more mana. Every single time you will waste one mana. And this always dies, by the way. Like, literally, it always dies. Of course, we don't activate it because it's unconditional removal. However, Sorry, I really have high hopes for Sorry. Freak you, bro. I hate it so much. We also have Trespassers. Why our opponent got them? Like, we can remove it by just discarding three cards, basically. Uh, it doesn't seem like the best deal in the world. Problem is that we are on the draw, so before Midhook goes to three, and we also switch to nighttime anyway, so that's even more awful. Man, this this sucks. <laughs> this sucks so much. On the bright side, we don't care whether it's four toughness or three toughness because we need to exile enough cards that it doesn't really matter. Do you want to exile something, bruh? We actually have to do it. It's uh, it's so freaking lame. No, uh, we do it like this. And we discard the other one for ward. At least if our opponent doesn't flood the board, it means that midhook massacres weren't super needed. Like, they are useful and you want to have them, but, you know, in the worst case you can live without them. I'm doing it main phase without taking damage because I hope he will tap out. He does not. I really think he would counter if he could. Like, this was such a good play e to counter this, and Ward basically triggers for free, and we are g completely wrecked, and we still die to Trespasser. So this means that he didn't have this option, because he would take it if he could. And Planewalkers are very annoying to remove. See? Sloth always draws from Sorinu for 0 HP. It's basically, plus one, draw a land from top of your library. That's it. That's the full text. Man, our... okay. Uh, early game was definitely to the upside of our opponent. Now, see, every single time, Sorin is a land drawing machine. Okay, this is actually. Please don't have something. Okay, this land. Okay, so after three lands, we actually have cards in the deck. Sorin, it's your time to draw another land. Uh, land, please. Land, please. Oh my god, it's not a land. You, sorry, you did it just to be mean. Like, admit it. You just wanted me to look bad. Um, yeah, I kind of like this one. Okay, what do we do, really? Our opponent has open mana. I don't think he has... He might have counter spell, but I'm not banking on it. So maybe we just play it. You know, just free pressure. And we start with this one because opponent sees it. I want to see your hand. Show me. Show me what you got. Uh, oh boy. And and he had stuff. <laughs> he definitely had stuff. Uh, Sorin will ultimate next turn. Which is super funny because our opponent is dead. <laughs> He's actually dead. He will play the Emperor. He will make a token. He will attack the Sorin to prevent the ultimate we will block with the sleeper then we ultimate with Sorin and kill him with despair bang that's the plan he will only deal two damage because he has creature this unless he plays wending announcement and then despair doesn't deal any damage but we trade three for one and we win anyway one of the two there oh and he just went if that's untapped land he will play a wedding if not he lost he will lose anyway, but you know, one one has style points, one doesn't. <laughs> uh, oh, is he is, is he accepting the loss? We need to think what we get just to make it more painful. Like there must be a card that will say, "Oh, it hurts more." <laughs> uh, so we are this kind of person. 
we are playing black we need to be evil we are basically like this bad sorcerer at the top of the death tower that wants to see the world burn and be all the zombies uh, quality content while enemy makes his only decision that he can cool yeah who could predict this one and okay so invoke despair won't kill stuff so maybe we can have something our opponent is basically how Sorin works let's read the card oh I I know what are the style points yeah yeah <laughs> that's how we do it oh yeah that's how we do it baby <laughs> oh can you feel the pain in coming bro do you want to draw a card I love it. Oh, it's so good. Okay, so our opponent goes first. We have decent start. I'm I'm so sure Sleeper, oh my god, against Red. Sleeper is just auto lost <laughs> creature, basically. But we'll try to make it work. Like, there's no way around it. So if he wants, I guess two mana is good enough. Like, he will at least have to uh, change his play, maybe. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Uh, his deck probably is built around Ledger Shader, so we need to get rid of it as soon as possible. Uh, even though I would love to start ramping the Sleeper, it's just not a, a winning play, basically. Okay, now it gets scary. Okay, so he really wanted to connive. Uh, I think he should have protection spells, but he definitely didn't go for it. I want some black card that I can exile without feeling bad. And I did not get it. Now I feel really bad. I don't want to try this one. We could just attack and hope he blocks and then we go for two. Uh, unfortunately, our opponent has colors. I think the spare is more important. And we can go for four as well, right? No reason. Oh no, we have sleeper. So three is actually good enough. Oh, I hate the display, but I'm pretty sure we, sh we have to do it. Oh, that hurts me. We have That was like 50% of the value of my hand just to get rid of this annoying, annoying bird. I, I love that this is like only annoying card in the format. And it's not even annoying, at, like to be honest. Uh, like uh, the format. Oh my God, I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy with the new format. Yeah, I know you will kill him. I know it. That's why we won't pump it. Nah. Uh -huh. And he will kill it at the end step. You freaking maniac. <laughs> and then he will play something. Scatter thought. Okay, okay. I see this card played a little bit more lately. We cannot draw cards, so there's no sense to respond. I just changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did change my mind right now uh, because he stepped out so maybe he has to like uh, two toughness removal so let's make sure that our guy is three toughness you know this actually like play with fire doesn't kill it anymore so no reason to not make it a bit harder for our opponent like this is the play and I kind of like it if he lets us untap it means that we will get the value out of the sleeper we draw car we draw cards even when the dies so let's keep attacking i know i can sneak one more damage but i don't think it's worth it there is a chance that he wants he has three damage card so if we respond by counter uh, to like lightning strike they nas the, like i'm sure they are playing lightning strike because that's the staple right now Ah, uh, yeah, this sucks, but enjoy. Like, it sucks for us, of course. So, for example, if he targets this with Lightning Strike, if we activate the trigger first, he can kill it. If, uh, yeah, and in the opposite, he cannot, basically. I got lost in my thought, but you get the idea. 
And now he can, if, and he, if we do it on his turn, then it means that he needs to tap out his main phase instead of end step. And that's a huge deal because we are basically gaining full turn ahead. So right now we do it because even if he answers, it's fine. It's completely fine because he only has three mana. So I'm like, I think they prepare for this play. So you, they usually have something, but we get to draw a card anyway. And he stepped out, so our Invoke Despair is way, way better. See, I told you, he had 3 damage. Our play completely prevented his idea of how, how to do it. If we went greedy and went for this extra damage, he would get so much ahead and he wouldn't need to play it. And now our Invoke Despair wouldn't work. Uh, I kinda hate that we need to waste basically whole Invoke Despair just to answer the Fable. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's how good the card is, right? We have to do it. At least we answered the fable, you know. Five mana, answer to three, three drop. <laughs> fable, you are taking the gold spam place as the most annoying card in the format. Uh, definitely the pressure was lost because how good this card is. But hopefully we, he cannot follow up with anything great. Or if he can follow up, it's something that dies to Liliana or Inferno Grasp, which is most of the things. Okay. What is the card, my friend? I guess some kind of draw effect, like Impulse? Oh, he went to chapter 2 straight away. Okay, so this is probably some instant sorcery. Spam deck, they might have the Tolarian Serpent thingy. Interesting, really interesting. First of all, let's go with the Trespasser, see how it goes. Essence Scatter, good. Good, it means that Liana will probably go through. I hope! Unless he has made this appear as well. <laughs> okay, and now we plus, because we don't care about cut down. And his cards definitely will hurt. Oh, okay, so he has protection spells for like the birds. The bird is actually not great, because if, he, if one of those cards is, is a bird, this is a bit scary. What he will take? Probably first? No, Scattered Thoughts should be the play, because that's the highest value. He went for a greedy version, but I think, like, if he pays one more mana, doesn't he get, like, huge more selection than this? Like, he gets to find out of four cards instead of three. So, I'm not sure. I think it was worth investing the mana, unless he has, like, really good cards. When you cast a copy, you may choose new cards. Okay, so he double kills Liliana. That's a lot of value just to answer a plane walker for three mana. And that's a that's a very good draw. This will be hard for our opponent to kill, and we can start pressuring him. Like dealing five damage to this deck is a lot. As you can see, they struggle with everything that has more than three toughness. I told you they play like Nick Strike. Everything they play is three damage to a creature, so they need two of those cards. Two of those cards. And, well, my friend, whenever you draw a card, our opponent draws a card, they lose to life. <laughs> the evil Dimir laugh, not playing Dimir. Would you like to draw two cards? Oh, he's going for it. <laughs> he's going for it. Oh my god. Can you draw one more card, please? I would be honored if we could play one more card. <laughs> Do it. Do it. I know you won't. No. <laughs> okay, now he can draw. Uh, is this something he had to draw? Otherwise he should... Are you freaking... <laughs> Are you freaking serious? That's his last top deck. <laughs> Let's shatter his dreams. No, bro. No, bro. Wrecked. I'm so happy right now. Oh, the the nerd happiness is is so intense. First, hmm, this hand is definitely way better on the play than on the draw, because this depends on mana and this depends on you know who has board presence. But you know there is a possibility of like trespass. Oh boy, a shroom, a fungus. One mana, one mana. At the beginning of your upkeep, mill a card. Then if there are three or more creature cards, transform. 
and then it's 3-3 three, three. at the beginning of your upkeep you may exile card from graveyard if a creature was exiled this way put a count i kind of like it it's it's cool it is cool so i think we let him mill one card it can't be that bad can it and it gives us some idea what we are playing against so i like it exile target artifact or enchantment if spirit i was kicked exile bro i'm reading please don't interfere if this spell was kicked, exile target non-land permanent. Huh, interesting. So this and like this enchant or naturalize with the upside of being a re direct remove. I really like the card. It's super cool. Uh, what's up? Uh, sure. My my creature better. My creature better. Okay, that was great impression. I know. <laughs> uh, what is this card? Mirror three cards, then put a counter on target creature. We can we can remove it. I hope he goes for the fungus. Yeah, I didn't want to give him more milling, but I think one card can hurt. You freaking monster! Why did you make the correct decision? I hate you. We can meet hook for one next turn, but it's it's the next turn. Okay, you got it. Okay, you got it. Man, I I am so excited to play Golgari. I actually really like. I don't know if I like this particular deck, but like, I really like the whole idea, and we can make something out of it. I'm sure. Okay, this one is freaking scary. Luo Guelph. Okay, whatever. So that's a kicker, right? So kicker. Enters battlefield, mill three cards each time it was kicked. Hmm, that's a hard one. So we definitely let him throw because we don't have a choice. Okay, and we can. Oh, because it's not when it enters the battlefield, but as. It means that the trigger doesn't go on the snack, on the stack, not snack. That's actually super important and something I did not know about. Like, we can get it to 2-2, two, two. that's not good enough. Huh. This can, like, bounce next turn. I don't know how to play this. Oh, we can use the... T okay, okay, I just realized what the play is. Cool, bro. I think we are not scared anymore. You could say, I'm not afraid. Because Trespasser is basically, like, completely obliterating their deck. <laughs> that isn't it. Uh, Tanuki or Hen I'm scared of Henrika. Oh, everything is a little bit sl smaller, isn't it? And then this one becomes a creature. We want land from the top. That's really important. Teachings, mill tree. Okay, let's see how many he hits. That's a lot. Okay, we need to meet hook right now before they transfer. This is one of the bad sides of the card at the beginning of your... Can we freaking not whiff land for one single game? One fifth of the deck and I draw three lands. That's... Man, I should have like five by now. And that's exactly what I need. I need five lands. Man, we, are, we need to play so much worse just because we cannot hit a single normal card draw. Oh my god, it's so annoying. Like, mid hook for three, if we could do it, would just win the game probably right now. But we cannot do it because our lands don't exist in the deck. And now we need to go around those things like in a weird way. I cannot attack with the trespasser because the lure is too, too, too big. Uh, I will need Inferno Grasp. It would be great to have mana to cast my spells, but obviously that's not the possibility for this deck. Man, I'm pretty sure we play Elter 25. Or I think it, I upped it just for this reason to 26 lands and we still cannot hit our 4 drops on curve. It's just insane how bad it's going on on the land row. And I think we still probably win. I think we will win because we have... Are you freaking serious? Where are my lands in this deck? Like, soon I will draw one fourth of the deck with 26 lands and I will have three lands. So it means that I have the equivalent of drawing uh, lands as I was playing 12 of them in the deck. 12 lands, that's how I draw. <laughs> it's insane. Oh, the rage is boiling. 
you know what's good part about not drawing any good cards? Is the fact that I have so much to freaking exile. I, 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 I'm fed up with this. We are doing it the hard way, bro. Freaking, I will use my cards as a land if the deck doesn't cooperate. And I will exile everything from this freaking deck. First, Tenacious Underdog. You are first, because you are both a creature and something he can cast. This one is 7 mana, so we have a lot of time before it, it is a factor. And I will freaking play my whole game on True Lands, if that's the case. That's one of the good things about March. If you are like under like the wall, you can actually use... And now we got the land, after we did all the plays that need mana. Yay. Cool. Oh, I'm so freaking mad right now. Okay, so what is the play? Jokes aside, we attack with the Trespasser, I think that's a given. And I think we cast Soaring just to get ahead, ahead on the cards a bit. Because we are really behind after all of this horrible, crazy horrible worst in the, in the whole world gameplay. Um, I think... If they have something that gets back creatures, it's probably the highest cost that we should remove. Like, they obviously have cards like this. Okay. Man, like, we need night mode so much, but we don't... We, we cannot skip a turn. Like, we are so behind already that we cannot skip the turn. And this is Soaring that will hopefully start drawing me five lands from the top. You will see, now we will get only lands because we solved the case of mana screw. And now it will be land, 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 land. Liliana might be the only value card we will see in this game. Yeah, I'm a bit ranty. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, okay, sure. It, it's nearly a land, okay? It's nearly a land. I was very close. <laughs> okay, so that's an insect. Yeah, so this one mills cards and depending on what you mill, uh, you get different type of effect, basically. Uh, this is a bit scary because next turn the reanimation comes into play. Uh, and I don't know how to go around it. I don't think we can, to be fair. So that's right, like that's really scary. Uh, I think evolve, uh, Evolved Sweeper, <laughs> I will just call it Evolved Sweeper, uh, might get Death Touch, but they won't attack with Toxin. That's that's kind of scary. That was a weird attack, bro. Bro. Okay. Like I don't mind. Uh, maybe Shouldred is the play that will kill our opponent. Oh my God! It's already here. I thought it's more mana. Why? 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 What? What? what what's going on? What's going on? Why was it cheaper? Exile target. What? I don't understand. I'm too much of a dummy. This has flashback of 7. He has 6 mana. What's going on? Did he have a treasure out of Rootstein? I guess he had. I just completely missed it, I guess. Huh. Toxir won't be able to kill us in time. I think I know the play. I, I know what I have to do. I don't know if I have the strength to do it. Uh, let's play this land. And we have to. We have to. Uh, I kind of think... No, we need to... We get. We need to get some damage done. Like, the face is the place here. So it has to be a creature, because that's basically the reason we are attacking. And don't forget, every time he kills something, we have meat hook. So he gets another damage. And he won't be able to melt Sheldred in time, and that's a big deal. He needs to find removal, or he dies in next turn. He cannot use blood as well, or any cargo. He needs something that removes creatures, or he dies. Man, I think Sheldred... Oh no, are you freaking serious? This freaking guy has it all while we struggle to find 4 land for 5 turns. Oh my god. It will be so hard to come back from this. He just got so much more time. Okay. 
Okay, I, I, I see some potential. Let's draw some cards. <laughs> oh, that's a card. Oh, that's a card, my friend. But uh, let's not get excited. Don't we just win? Uh, so when we cast Invoke Despair, what happens? We deal four damage, right? He has no enchantments. No, none of them are enchantments. So then he is at three. This gets him to one, but he still does not die. I think this is the play. Yeah, this is way better. We did one damage with this before the slugs come. We heal a bit, so it's harder to kill us. Sheldred won't die, so he will deal two damage. Lose life. Also, he cannot use the blood tokens at all, because uh, they deal damage to him. And now Invoke the Spur is lethal even if he kills Sheldred. And also, if he kills Sheldred, it's one additional damage. Are you freaking serious? That's that's a gain life? Oh, okay, no. This card... Oh, boy, that's so close! Oh, uh, if that's his last play, we won. This is just a creature. It's, we, we navigated it perfect. Can you freaking believe we will win this game with so awful draws and being so behind? It's insane. We actually navigated this game. I think th like we had no chance in this game. Like we had every right to lose this game and we should lose this game. Uh, I think we just cheated death by, by this gameplay. Like we navigated somehow that we exactly did deliver. Oh my god, this is the game I'm the most proud of. Like this March play was game winning back then. We didn't know about it yet.